my life. Just snatched on me to time and far ahead of the United States. Well, even Bollywood dancing has become popular in various countries. I was in Germany a few months ago discussing with the CEOs of uh, some, some very well-known companies and they were talking about how their children wanted to go and learn Hollywood dancing. These are Germans. Let me give you the example of my own company, not because I want to brag about it, but just to tell you the kind of changes that have happened in the country. Because in some sense, my own company, the microcosm of the extraordinary revolution that is taking place in urban India. We started our company with just $250 and seven people. Those days, it would take us three years and about 50 visits to Delhi to get a license to import a computer worth $100,000. Those days, it took us about 15 to 20 days with the Reserve Bank of India to obtain a, a foreign exchange permit to travel abroad for one day. Those days, it took us three years to get a telephone connection. Today, the government is not at all an inhibitor for our growth. We have become market driven. Government, in fact, has become a catalyst to our growth. What is the result? The result is that in the last 30 years, we have grown from $140,000 of revenue in the first year to $6 billion. I mean, this year will be a $6 billion company. We have grown from a net income of $25,000 in 82. This year we expect to be about $1.55 billion net income. And from a, from a $250 investment, Today our market capitalization is about 40 plus billion dollars. All of this has happened primarily because of a very important reason, and that is the government stepped out of our way and said, we want you to become successful. Now this is all wonderful. There is no doubt at all that all of us who have benefited from being part of urban, urban India. We have much to grow about, much to be happy about, much to be proud of, much to cheer about. But there is another story. As I said right in the beginning, I believe in democracy, I believe in openness, I believe in transparency. Therefore, I am not worried about discussing our problems openly. I don't want to speak those problems under the carpet. Therefore, let me talk about the tale of the other India. We have 350 million Indians who are illiterate. The largest mass of illiteracy in, in, in the world. Second, we have 250 million Indians who have no access to safe drinking water. We have 340 million Indians who are poor by our own reckoning. The Planning Commission said India had 250 million poor people, that is people who earn less than a dollar a day or something like that. But my friend Suresh Tendulkar, who is a very famous economist, came up with a good set of calculations and 
they say, no, it is not 250, it is 340. That's what democracy is all about. You can stand up, use your data, use your argument, and then come out with a, 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 a result that is different from the official figure. We have 750 million Indians who do not have access to decent sanitation that you and I are used to. We have only one teacher for every two classes in rural India in 50% of the schools. We have millions of children who go hungry and therefore they are not able to attend school because they have no energy. They cannot observe what the teacher is passing on to them. We believe that the future of India will be safe only if we can bring inclusive growth to our country. That is, the rich and the poor have to grow, the educated and the not so well educated have to grow, the urban and the rural will have to grow. That is true growth. We have to raise the confidence of our poor people so that they do accept the concept of compassionate capitalism that you and I have indeed accepted and that they appreciate that compassionate capitalism driven by entrepreneurship is the only way forward for India to become a better society. This requires, this requires us, you and I, you and all of us, to create hope in these poor people, in these poor children. Through decent education, healthcare, shelter and better economic opportunities for them. Success in education requires that children are given nutritious food so that they have the energy to absorb what the teacher is teaching them in the class, study well and succeed. This is the core belief of Desh Deshpande, Mohandas Pai, Ramdas Kama, Madhu Panditas, Chantra Panditas, etc., etc., in founding Akshay Pata. India has a small percentage of the population that can match and perhaps in some cases exceed global standards in engineering, in management, in finance and market. India also has a huge population, as I described just now, living in poverty that need the help of these wonderful people. Therefore, initiatives like Akshay Bhatta offer an excellent opportunity for this small group of people some of whom are all in this room to apply the best practices globally to bring solutions to the population living in poverty. Akshay Patra to me is a prime example of how this has been done and how this can be done in the future. Akshay Patra is a celebration of a wonderful example of public-private partnership. I congratulate the two Swamis, Chanchalapati Das and Madhu Pandit Das. I congratulate Desh Desh Pandey. I congratulate Ramji. I congratulate Ravi. I congratulate Suma. I congratulate all the people. Plus Mondas Pai, Ramdas Kama, my wife Sudha Murthy, other trustees, Jai Shri, and the wonderful team throughout the world, including the one at Dallas, who have done a great job in creating a wonderful platform.